Paul Farbrace, uh, six wins out of eight. It's a tremendous start to the campaign. It is, yeah. Look, I, you know, I know how hard the players worked over the winter. You know, and I, I've said quite a few times that you know we worked on ramping, scooping. We've worked on being more skillful with the ball, um, and we've worked on our fielding. Um, and all all areas are at various stages in games are showing up. And it's something that the players should be very proud of because they're the ones who put the hard work in. They're the ones who really came out of their comfort zone through the winter. Um, and we, we went, you know, we went right back to the end of last season, the end of the season. Luke Dunning, our analyst, did a lot of work on the areas that we had to improve on. He, he, did, he put a lot of stats to um, the plans that we we're trying to put in place. And then we, we had a very thorough review with the coaches um, and then fed back to the players. We got players' input as well, and we came up with a very clear plan and what we felt we needed to improve on and what we need to work on over the winter. So, you know, Luke, as the analyst, takes a lot of credit for that because he's put a lot of time into that. Um, and then the coaches have worked exceptionally hard to make sure that we had the right plans for each player in place. But it, it always comes down to the players. It doesn't matter how hard we put, you know, work in as coaching group or the analyst, it comes down to the players actually having the mentality to want to improve and get better. Because it's really easy to say, well, that's what I do or that's how I play or this is what's got me this far. And all of them have actually said, no, I want to get better. I want to improve and I'm prepared to listen to what you've got to say and I'm prepared to give it a go. And when, when you're in front of a bowling machine at uh, 80 miles an hour and we're asking them to get inside it and ramp it over their own shoulder so that we can make use of, you know, scoring behind us as well as just in front of us, um, that's not an easy thing to do. And, and it takes a lot of courage because, you know, your mates are seeing your stumps keep being knocked over. They're seeing you hit on the pad a lot. And it, it takes a lot to keep developing and working hard at that skill. And it's not just that. It's, you know, bowling slower balls. It's attacking in the field, being 10 yards off the rope and trying to stop a two, trying to create an opportunity um, to take the catch. You know, bowlers having the, the courage to bowl slower balls. And, you know, as I say, the, the, the coaches have done a phenomenal job, but it's actually, it always comes down to the players actually having the courage to do it. But then it comes down to the, them walking off, knowing that the coaching staff and everybody else in the dressing room are 100% behind them. And I think that's, that's the one thing that, you know, you look at the team, you look at the the skill levels, but you also look at the heart, you know, and, and the passion to, 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 to win games. You know, today, after 12 overs of our batting, we probably weren't winning that game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, probably last season, and I can't talk about it before, but last season, we wouldn't have won that game. Um, you know, I remember saying here, we got a cricketing lesson from Hampshire last year. They outbatted, bowled and fielded us, and they were a lot smarter than us in 12 months on. You know, that's a great win for us, you know, because th these are a team that, you know, I would hold up as a benchmark in T20 cricket. They've been very skillful, very successful over a long period of time. So to come here and to beat them um, speaks volumes for us. But, you know, e each win is about taking confidence, gaining confidence and taking it into the next game. And when, you, when you're in that sort of situation, it's a really good place for your team to be. You know, we've got 15 guys upstairs. The four that haven't played tonight could all come in and play. You know, we think you've got Carson, Carter, Carvalis and Crokham could all play in our team. And that's without one or two of the others that are back at Hove that are not even here. So we've got a good group and, you know, we've rotated the group from time to time. And fortunately, whenever we've changed the team, you know, Ward's come into the side and played brilliantly. He's got two, you know, match-winning scores. Um, he's also got two low scores, but that's the nature of T20 cricket. Only three players, actually, that, that played in the game last year, Paul, played in this game. So there's been a lot of change in this Sussex side. And it seems in, e in every game that someone different has stood up as well. And, and that's, that's a great sign, isn't it? Because you're not relying on one batsman or one bowler to win your games. You know, we're, we're obviously benefiting hugely from having Oliver available for us at the top of the innings with the ball. He's, he's bowled fantastically well. Mills, he showed his skill. Lammy has been great for us, as I knew he would be. Um, but you're absolutely right. The, you, know, the, the, you know, at the end of every game, 
that the, I guess, the sort of the player of the match has been shared out. It's not been the same person every time. Nathan McAndrew, you know, he's had a couple of indifferent games, but he's also had some fantastic games. And the game tonight was another fantastic game. The momentum that he created for us in the field by scoring the runs he scored at the end of our batting innings um, enabled us to, rather than sort of get into 150, at one point, Grant and I were sitting on the bench saying, 145, 150 is a good score yeah. here. And if we, that was where we were 80. Um, so we said, if we can get 140, 145, we've done well. To then get ourselves up to that 180 mark is a phenomenal effort. Um, but look, we, we, as I say, people are improving. People are prepared to put themselves under pressure. They're prepared to come out of their comfort zone. And as a result, they're then getting small wins. And that gives them more confidence to go into the next game. And that's, that's a really, really good place. That, and, and also, look, Millsy, as captain, you know, we've just said upstairs, you know, eight games in, his experience and knowledge is really paying dividends. And, you know, he's a very calm captain. He's a very skillful captain, but he's also spent a lot of time over the winter working on how he wants the team to play, what he wants in terms of the shape of the team. And, it, it, you know, no disrespect to Ravi, who was captain last year, but, you know, Millsy is someone who has really taken the role on and has done a fantastic job. And that's just been pointed out to him upstairs by a few of the players. And, and that's also a really good place to be. You mentioned Ollie Robinson. What's the situation with Ollie in terms of test matches around the corner? When are you going to know about whether he's going to be called up or will he be available for Sussex? Well, at the moment, we're working on the bases available to play for us on Sunday against Leicester in the county championship. Um, and I just hope that, you know, Stokesy and McCullum have forgotten about him and he's going to play for the rest of the season for Sussex. So, you know, that, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's my hope at the moment. And I just hope that, you know, he's bowling really well, but I'm not telling anyone he's bowling really well because I don't want him disappearing off to play for England. Um, you know, we've got some important games to win for Sussex first. So, you know, don't worry about the England West Indies Test Match series. Let's, uh, let's worry about him winning a few games for Sussex. But look, he's been outstanding. And when, you know, when you look at the, the quality of our bowling, you know, when you think that Crokem, as I say, Crokem, Carvalis, you know, are, are not getting into our team, um, that, that, that's a great place for us to be because those two could easily come into the side and we, we wouldn't be a lesser side with him in the team because they both got a lot of skill and they've play, played a lot of first-team cricket. But having, you know, Millsy, McAndrew, Lamb um, and Robinson as your, your seamers with Coles bowling brilliantly. You know, Archie's made a contribution a bit like, you know, Jack Carson has. It's been a brief contribution, but it's been an excellent contribution. Um, and Finn's not even getting the bowl either. Finn Hudson Prentice is not getting the bowl other than at Bristol. So, you know, that, that's, that's a really good place. And as you said earlier, people are contributing, you know, all the way through the batting order and the, the wide range of bowling that Mills has got available to throw the ball to, that's also fantastic as well. No respite. A day off, or you probably haven't got a day off. No, actually. we're in for practice tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Right. So we're, Sharp. we're, we're in at 11. We're, we're practicing 11 till 1. Um, and then the coaches have got a couple of hours meeting through the afternoon to talk about next season. So it really isn't a day off tomorrow. It's a proper full on day. And then we'd be rocking up Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, ready to go for the championship game. How difficult is that to switch between the two, Paul, back into the Red Bull mode? Uh, look, it, it, it's not easy, but it is what it is. You know, we know at the start of the season, and we've been planning for this change over you know all year really we've been planning since we've had the fixtures and we knew that it was always going to be a tricky time and, that, and that's where you know having the experience of you know you've got Ash Wright, James Kirtley, Grant Flower as coaches we've got some really good experienced people who have seen it all before they've experienced it they know how to deal with it and they're really good at making sure that you know everyone is prepared and ready to go so you know over the last couple of weeks we've been preparing people like Tom Haynes ready for the championship team um, you know he played in the second team game this week um, but you know th those players are preparing for that um, and then you know whilst we're playing these two championship games against Leicester and Northampton we'll also be preparing with Millsy for the next T20 game because you know that that's going to come around very quickly on the I think it's the 5th or whatever of July that will come around quickly but th the great thing is that when you're winning games of cricket and confidence is high everyone's looking forward to the next game everyone wants to get better everyone wants to improve everyone wants to be in the team and that's also a really good place to be so you know it, it, it could be worse we could be two wins from eight and we could be you know second bottom of the championship but the fact that we're top of the championship and, and look, I, I think honestly I think we're in the championship cricket we're where we think we should be um, and we know we've got a lot of work to do you know we're not patting ourselves on the back I think in T20 cricket we're probably happier 
that we're actually further on with the project of T20 cricket than we probably thought we would be at this stage of the season. So we're probably punching a little bit above our weight, but that's also a great sign. Um, and it's nice also. We know we've still got areas to improve um, and we're winning games. So when you're winning games and you know you've got things to improve, that's a pretty good place to be. Um, quick, quick word on injuries. Daniel Hughes went off, looked like he'd hurt his hand. Any, any yeah, news on he, that he's got a whack on the thumb. I think he just needs a couple of spoonfuls of cement and he'll be fine for Sunday. I mean, if he's a proper Aussie, he'll be available for Sunday. Um, but look, no, he's got a whack on the thumb. It, it, you know, it could be that he might battle for Sunday and, and that would be a great shame because the, the way that he's played in T20 cricket, we were looking forward to him playing in the championship side on Sunday. But if he's not to be, then there's one or two other people waiting in the wings for their chance. And, you know, sometimes someone else's misfortune is someone else's good fortune. Tom Clark's been missing with the shoulder injury. What, what's the state of play with that? Yeah, it's a shame. Clark, he's, you know, he's probably still another three weeks away, I reckon, from playing again, um, which is a great shame because he's been in great form, worked really hard. He's one of the players over the winter that's worked exceptionally hard and given himself a great chance. And it was a great shame that he got injured um, playing a reverse sweep against the National Counties team, the Challengers. Um, so, yeah, he, he's probably another, I would think, probably at least another three weeks away from being available. But apart from that, clean bill of health? I hope so. As I say, touch wood. Um, the only one is uh, is Hughesy that we hope that he, he'll be fine. But uh, as I say, we've got people waiting in the wings to come in. Um, and so if someone else has to come in, then good luck to them.